everyone, this is Ashley Jamerson coming to you from Ashley Lambert Realty. And today I wanna to talk to my future home sellers out there about why their home didn't sell. And this is a very, very touchy topic, especially since we are still currently in a seller's market and all of your neighbors are selling, all of your friends are selling, but your home for some reason, which we'll dive into, did not sell. So I'm gonna share my top seven reasons and there are more, but these are my top seven. And hopefully we can nip that in the bud and get your home listed and sold in no time at all. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about something that you cannot change, and that is location. It literally is what it is when it comes to location. You cannot pick your home up unless you live in a mobile home and move it to another lot. So oftentimes buyers were saying things like, the yard is too small, the yard slopes down, you can see power lines from the home. It is next to or backing up to a commercial area, which you knew about it and you loved it, but these future buyers are being super picky and they don't love it. Or perhaps the school zone has changed and the school is now less desirable than say your competition. Most buyers in a perfect world want the perfect home on the perfect lot with the perfect schools and all of that comes with a perfect price, which is usually a lot higher. So if you're running into a situation where the location is really, really irking out these future home buyers, then you could possibly adjust your price to accommodate that. If you have no yard, maybe look at homes that are similar to yours that had like a similar yard and price it accordingly. Or if your home is located in a home that's not desirable, you can sort of offset that by making the interior of your home absolutely phenomenal. Number two is the price. Every homeowner wants to sell their home for the most amount of money as possible. However, if you overprice your home, it inevitably makes your home sell for less. And I know that seems crazy, but if your home is overpriced and it's sitting on the market for a really long time, then buyers are gonna have this misconception that something is wrong with your house. And they're gonna look for anything and everything to why they should lower the price, when in reality, your home is worth slightly less and not as much less as the buyer is going to discount your home. Qualified buyers who could afford your home and would love your home and appreciate your home are not seeing your home because when they or their realtor is doing a home search in their price range, your home isn't showing up. So the people that can buy it aren't seeing it and you're not selling your home which keeps it on the market longer, which lowers the price. See how that works? It's like the cyclical thing here. And worse yet is that you receive no offers, which is why your home may have expired, or lowball offers, which frustrated you, which made you withdraw it from the market. So you as a seller, you also have to be very realistic and listen to your realtor who you hired as the professional to help you price and market your home to attract the perfect buyer. Now, before I jump into my third reason why your home possibly didn't sell, I wanna insert a little story here about a home that I had listed in South Charlotte. Now, when the seller first contacted me and I looked up the home, I looked at the photos online, I looked at the marketing, I looked at all the information, and I could not figure out why this home did not sell and why this home was not priced for more. And when I actually went inside the home, I knew why it didn't sell, but these are things that were like blatantly in your face as a professional real estate agent. So basically it was listed previously for 425,000 and then it was listed for 495,000 and I ultimately sold that house for $532,000. So it's not always lowering the price. It may be adding a few things, repairing a few things, cleaning a few things, just a little touch-ups here and there to meet the buyer's expectations and then pricing it accordingly. So a good realtor will be able to see the diamond in the rough and point out things that you should fix in your home to get top dollar. So when I'm saying price, I'm not always meaning lowering the price. Sometimes adding a few dollars here and there. In this case, it was about $18,000. 
adding $18,000 would increase the price by over $100,000. That's something to think about <laughs> when you are hiring a real estate agent. So let's jump into number three, condition. The condition of your home matters. Yes, I know that there were lots of houses that were thrown onto the market a few months ago and the seller was like, I'm not making any repairs, I'm not doing anything, take it or leave it. The next buyer will love it and move into it and I can wash my hands of this home. Now things are slowing down a little bit and sellers have to really think about the condition of their home and really think about their competition. Buyers want the most house, the best house for their money. And oftentimes existing sellers, expireds for sale by owners, things like that, are being considered right alongside brand new construction homes. So you and your realtor need to get together and figure out a way to make your existing home as new as possible. And those are just adding a few updates, adding a few upgrades, just to make it comparable to get top dollar. I'm gonna throw smell into the condition of the home because I have ran into some odd smells <laughs> while showing property and even listing property. But during the listing appointment, I sort of nip that in the bud while I'm there. But as a buyer's agent, I have seen or open doors to homes where the smell is like the first thing. So no matter how pretty the home is, how nicely decorated, if your cat, if your dog, if your basement smell bad, or if your house is heavily scented with seasonal scents or tropical scents that don't belong in North Carolina, then we know that you're covering up something. So definitely think about that when you are getting ready to list your home. If your house stinks, invite over a friend who is not nose blind, invite a friend over who is honest and can say, hey girl, your house smells like dog. <laughs> and find a way to fix it. If, if that means replacing your carpet, then it's worth it if it'll get you into that next price range. If your home needs to be aired out, wait till a really, really good rain and open up your windows and just let the air circulate. That alone improves the smell of your house and you don't have to rely so heavily on Glade plugins, which are not terrible, but they're very strong for people who are sensitive and have allergies. You don't have to rely on those plugins and candles to scent your home. If you are cooking heavily spiced foods or seafood in your home and you wanna sell it, I would definitely think twice maybe go out to eat those nights where you're having those cravings for crab legs. But definitely, again, think about the condition of your home and think about how a buyer will perceive the condition of your home, not how you perceive the condition of your home. Reason number four why your house did not sell is not knowing what market we are in. Now, at any given point, we are in one of three markets. We're in a seller's market when the seller has the upper hand and the prices are going sky high. That's something that we've been experiencing a lot here lately in Charlotte. Then we are in a normal balanced market where there's equal houses and equal buyers. The pricing in these markets tend to not be increasing so drastically. The increase is still there, but it's not like it's been like just crazy, like thousands and thousands of dollars over six months. And then there's the buyer's market where the buyer has the upper hand and the seller, I'm not going to say has to bow down to all of the requests of a buyer, but let's just say that in 2006 to 2009, I was making some pretty loaded offers and sellers were very eager to just have a buyer interested in their home. So I mentioned this to say that you need to know what market you're in so you can price it accordingly, so you can market it accordingly, and so you can mentally prepare accordingly. When it's a seller's market, you pretty much will put your house on the market and you'll have a whole bunch of prospective buyers just coming through your home right away and they'll start putting bids in. If your house is move-in ready, well-maintained, and doesn't have condition or location problems. In a normal market, it may take a couple of weeks, but you'll still have traffic, but it'll be more steady. You might have three to five showings instead of 
10 showings the first week. And then there's the buyer's market where you may get one showing appointment for the whole week, maybe one or one every two weeks. And you really want to make sure your home shows really, really well for that one buyer. Also, knowing the market will better prepare you on what type of offer you may or may not be receiving. So in a buyer's market, like I said, 2006, I was loading it up. <laughs> I was asking for closing calls, home warranties, repairs, credits, all types of stuff. In a seller's market, clean offer. <laughs> really good price, strong out the gate, strong due diligence, strong earnest money. And again, a normal balance market is somewhere in between, but you have been mentally prepared on how to deal with those various markets. Also, keep in mind that when you purchased your home, you may have purchased it in a different market that you're selling it in. And the advice that you're getting from your friends and family may be different considering on the location of their house, like a different state, which is drastically different than Charlotte, or they purchased and sold their current home if they even own a home. I have had that situation before, but their situation in their market when they did that is so different from today's market. For instance, on the buyer side, I had a buyer tell me that their friend didn't have to do due diligence money years ago asking some questions. Yeah, there wasn't even a such thing as due diligence money a few years ago. That's like sort of kind of new. So that was really terrible advice. And then I've had situations where sellers said that they are going to list at this price and then work their way down because that's what their friend did. Again, in a different market. The goal is to list your home at a price that is worth to sell it quickly, get the net that you need and want so you can move on to your next home. So all this extra advice and stuff can really muddy up the water a little bit. Number five, this irks me as a buyer's agent and it also irks me as a listing agent. And that is when there's absolutely no availability to show your home. If you really want to sell your home, make it available to show it. If your home is tenant occupied, so it's like a rental or income property for you and you have a tenant in place, you need to work with that tenant beforehand to make sure that they know that A, you're selling, B, you're not selling it to them, and C, possibly give them an incentive. Say, hey, I'm putting my house on the market on Thursday. I need you to be out of the house on Saturday. How about I pay for you and your kids to go to Great Wolf Lodge for the weekend or a movie date or a discovery place in Huntersville? Like how about I do something like that to get you out of the house for X amount of time so I can show the property. If you work from home, possibly go into the office on some of those days. If you have small children possibly go to a friend or family's house for a few days but definitely make your home available for those buyers who have really flexible times to view properties and also those who can only view properties after work you again your goal is to sell the house as quickly as possible and when i have my buyer's agent hat on if i have a list of four properties and one of them is like well you can only see it between four and five o'clock on a Saturday. A, I don't really work on Saturdays that often, but I'm gonna show those other three properties and more than likely my client will pick one of those three properties that we saw because they don't wanna miss out on those three. So in essence, you just helped me sell your competition and you don't wanna do that. The sixth reason why your home didn't sell is the agent that you chose to hire. I know that this can be a touchy subject because you may have hired a friend or family member to list your property and maybe they were just too familiar and didn't do a great job or you hired the first person that came through your door and didn't shop around or, or didn't interview other agents. It's definitely not a knock on you as a person for hiring a wrong agent, but there are some things that you should know. First and foremost, agents, when they come into your house, obviously they're gonna to show tons of enthusiasm and confidence about selling your home. But I would always say, let them back it up with proof of evidence. Let them show you homes that they sold, 
buyers that they're currently working with. Let them show you their marketing plan and the results from their marketing plan. They need to have a worldwide reach, meaning that whatever they're doing to market themselves needs to have a reach outside of your local area, especially somewhere like Charlotte, where a lot of people are relocating to Charlotte. You really want to make sure that you're reaching out to anyone who is possibly considering Charlotte your neighborhood, your road, and your home. I have seen so many ugly photos of houses online and it literally drives me crazy as someone who takes great care in marketing homes online because I know that the first showing happens online. Many times agents will have a buyer consult, then they will set up a home search, and then they will work with the buyer to narrow down a list of possibly hundreds of homes down to four. Your home will be faded out if your pictures are dark, unclear, out of focus, if your rooms are cluttered. You need to hire an agent who you feel comfortable telling you that, hey, this room is cluttered. It will show so much better if you simply clean off the counters. Or better yet, let me help you put this in a box so I can take better pictures. That first showing online is so important. And just hire someone who you know for sure, again, backed up by marketing evidence, i.e. their recent listings, that they can present your home not only professionally, but beautifully online. This cannot be said with less boldness, but full-time realtors rock. One of your first questions when you are hiring a realtor to list your home is, are you a full-time realtor? It is, in my opinion, very hard to be a part-time realtor because you have other things you're doing. Like imagine if I had a nine to five job, two toddlers, a husband, and a dog, then everything that I need to do for my clients has to be mushed in between my work priorities, my family priorities, and that means I can only devote about 45 minutes to you. I don't know about you, but I feel that being a part-time realtor for a long period of time is almost a disservice to the clients because most of the questions and the fires that people have to put out, not literal fires, but you know, real estate fires that need to be put out happen during the day, are resolved during the day. Inspections, appraisals, conversations with the attorney, with the buyer's agents, with the lenders, all of that happens during the day. So you do need a full-time real estate agent and not a hobbyist who only needs to sell your money to maybe pay for a vacation or pay for a surprise bill. You want someone who has this as their career, their full-time job, so they can give you full attention. Bonus tip. So, most of you watching this video had a home that expired from the market or you are a for sale by owner and you're maybe looking for a local real estate agent here in the Charlotte area. But my bonus tip to you guys is listen to the feedback. That feedback is coming from prospective buyers who filter their search down to actually come and view your home in person and they didn't select your home and possibly selected another one. You need to know why and then you need to take that why and fix it as soon as possible. If they are telling you that your home stinks, that your home is dark, that your backyard does not fit their needs, if the price is too high, if there's no place for their children to play, if the carpets or the flooring or the walls are worn and needs to be replaced or repainted, you need to listen, you need to fix it, or you need to show them the solve for their problem. So let's take the my children have no place to play example. If they say that, what they're really saying is that I love this home, but I really want my kids to go outside and play and there's no backyard. 
So what you can do or what your realtor can do is reach out to that prospective buyer and buyer's agent and say, I understand that my intimate yard may be a little bit too small for you. However, my children or my grandchildren or my dog even loves the park down the street. It has a beautiful play area. They can go out there and run. There's an awesome splash zone. So you want to highlight the solve for that problem and then possibly they may submit an offer once you present that solve to their problem. If you can't fix it and you can't solve it, then it's the price more than likely. And you need to adjust the price. Waiting for that magical price from the purple squirrel just means that you are in that house longer and not in your new home or your new city or your new state and you're paying mortgage for a home that you no longer want or need. So each month you're paying mortgage, you're paying more principal, interest, taxes, and insurance for a home you're trying to get rid of. You should weigh that out and see if it's actually worth you overpricing your home and more than likely the answer is going to be no. If you or someone you know is considering selling and buying a home here in the Charlotte area, I would love to be your realtor. I have an awesome marketing plan and strategy that sells my clients' homes quickly and for top dollar. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. Bye for now.